All right. So you might be thinking, why are we starting with ChatGPT homepage? Well, I love ChatGPT. You can ask any question that you want and ChatGPT can answer it. And what we're going to ask is, why is testing important? Why is, or test-driven development in this case, test-driven development important? And you can do that, right? I mean, you have access to ChatGPT, so you will be able to do that also. So why is test-driven development important? Well, it improves the code quality, right? because you'll be able to write the code that you can maintain for the future. And it's also going to help you a little bit with the design part of it. When you're testing your code, you are also, uh, since because you're testing, you will have fewer bugs, all right? You will have much more confidence in refactoring. And I think this is such an important step, the refactoring part or adding a new feature part, which is different from refactoring, but adding new, new feature, uh, when you're adding new feature, you will have more confidence that it's not going to break anything because you will be uh, using test to make sure that the other parts of the code are not going to break. Uh, documentation, it does provide a bit of a documentation and reduce fear of failure. You know, with the test and development, uh, when you're writing the test, then the test is kind of like a net. So think of yourself as walking on the rope on a very high building or something. And if you fall, you're gonna fall on the net. That net, you know, the support is the test or the test. Uh, they're gonna save you from falling all the way down and hurting yourself. Let's see, explain red, green, refactor in the TDD. All right, let's see if it can actually, here we go. Uh, I wonder if it can actually create a diagram for this. That will be really cool, all right? So red, green, red means write a failing test. And let me actually ask it to create a diagram. Create an image for red, green, refactor in TDD. Let's see if it can create a diagram for that. Because diagram will be much better to explain these concepts for red, green, refactor because it's, uh, it's basically just flowing in a circle and you're continuously using that loop. There we go. Uh, it's kind of there, but it's not, I think it's a uh, red, green refactor. Yeah, it's not there actually. So let me go ahead and red, green refactor. Okay, so maybe we'll have to go to the actual image and find it. Okay, so this is a pretty decent image. We can use that. So red green refactor whenever you hear about tdd you will also hear about red green refactor the red part is you are starting with your test test and development right so you're starting with your test you're writing your test your test is going to fail because you haven't really written written any actual code so your test is going to fail that's the red part now you will write just enough code to make the test pass. That's the green part. You're just going to write enough code so your test is passing. Once your test is passing, then you refactor. Refactor basically means that you are not really changing the functionality of the code, but you're just making it a little better. All right, that's it. And if you're refactoring, and you have to go and change your test after refactoring, well, that means that there's something wrong. Refactoring your code should not change your test, all right? Because guess what? Refactoring is not changing the functionality. The functionality still remains the same. Again, writing a failing test, making the test pass, and then refactor. And we will be looking at that in the next lecture when we will uh, check out how to, you know, how to write the test. So we will be looking at all of this stuff, all right? In the previous lecture, you learn about TDD, testament development, and how testament development can help you writing better tests. And in this lecture, we'll be writing 
number of tests for our model, for our domain logic. And I'm going to choose the bank account example because everyone is familiar with deposit function and withdraw function. So you don't really have to learn a different domain right now for this case because we're just starting out and you'll be able to understand that uh, how to write test. Now I am using Xcode 16 and I will be using the new Swift library, the Swift testing library to write the test, but make sure that you understand that those Swift testing library or XC tests, these are just tools. All right, so don't get like attached to them that, oh, I'm going to use this one or else it's, it's going to be wrong or anything. You can use XC test if you want to. You can use Swift testing library if you want to. You can use a third party library if you want to. Tools are tools. Uh, the main thing is you're writing good test. All right. So I have this Swift UI application and it currently doesn't really have any testing target. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file menu, new, and add a target. Over here I can search for test and I can see the unit testing bundle. Let's go ahead and add that. That's fine. Whatever the name is suggesting is fine. And you can see the testing system, since I'm using Xcode 16, it's defaulting to Swift testing library. I mean, I can go ahead and also select XC test if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it to uh, Swift testing library. So here we go. We have added our test over here. Here we go. Now, one thing to note over here is it's already adding one test for me and I can just run this test. I can just press the play button and I can try to run this test. It is going to launch the simulator. So it might going to take some time uh, and then it's going to execute this test. Now, why is doing that? Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Well, in the first line, we are importing testing. That's the testing framework, the new testing framework, the Swift testing framework we're importing. This is not really the name of the test, but the name of the fixture. So this can contain other tests. The test name is example. And you can see that it's by default. We didn't really write this test. It was already there. And how do we know it's a test? Well, that's because it is marked with this testing or test um, macro, all right? Now, we don't really want this to be async and things like that, so we can remove that. And we can change the name for this also. We can change the name for this also. Uh, you can see the test is passing because it's green. So if we're writing test for a bank account, we should probably call this something, right? Bank account test. What are we testing? All right, let's say deposit money into the bank account. Be as descriptive as you want to when you're writing test. Deposit money into bank accounts. When somebody reads this test, they already know, oh, this test is testing, depositing the money into the bank account. Great. So how do we write the test? Now, keep in mind that we are using the principles of test-driven development. So this means that we are going to be writing our test first and the test is going to guide us a little bit to create our code, to write our code. So what can we do over here? If we want to test that we can deposit money into bank account, how should we write this test? Well, I'll create a bank account. What will we need to create a bank account? Well, probably we will know we'll need the account holder name. So I'll just pass in John Doe. We will need the uh, account number probably, account number. Whatever the account number is. And we can also pass in like an initial balance. Now, keep in mind that we don't have anything called bank account. There is no such thing as bank account. And this is known as test driven development. We are writing our tests first, even though we don't have anything like this. So we're 
we are just, you know, kind of like in creating an outline of how the bank account or what the bank account struct or class will look like. And now we can say bank account dot deposit, and I'm going to deposit one hundred dollar, and then I can check this is expect is the new macro that they introduce in surf testing library and expect the macro where it can create pass you can pass in a condition and if it returns true then your test passes if it returns false then your test is failing so i can say that the bank account dot balance will be equal to 200 why 200 well because we started with 100 we deposited 100 more so it's going to be 200 right now, if I run this test, it's not going to run. It's going to complain that I cannot find the bank account in scope. So there is no bank account class. So this is where we have to, you know, this is where we, we have to think about that. What are we going to do? Now, in order to remove this error, we have to create the bank account class. So I can go to my actual application and I can create a new folder just so that everything is organized correctly. Models and I can say new file from template and we should call this bank account. There we go. So now I can go ahead and create a class called bank account. Now, is it going to be a class? Is it going to be a struct? That's completely up to you like how you manage that in your application, that's completely up to you. If you want to create a class or you want to create, uh, you know, a struct. Uh, I think most common, I think if you see how you use it, you will use probably a class or else you will have to have mutating in and out functions. But right now I'm just going to create a class. All right. All right. So what things do we need over here? Like in our class, when we're building, do we do we need something like what properties do we need right so let's take a look at a couple of different properties we will need a balance obviously we can go ahead and say account holder maybe even account number and initializer okay i think we can rearrange them in a way so that our test is already using one of the initializer where you pass in the account number or account holder first. So we're just gonna use it like that. And I guess that's gonna allow us to, oh, it doesn't, doesn't understand that. There we go. And by default, we can actually pass in the balance of zero. Great. So at least now we have the bank account class, but we don't have the deposit function. So let's go ahead and create a deposit function. And I'm not really going to write anything in the deposit function. Uh, I just want you to see that the test will be able to hopefully run. So let me go ahead and see that. Okay, so it's not running because I still cannot find the bank account class. And in order to do that, what we can do is we can use this testable import property wrapper and import our main project, which is the introduction to testing. So the testable import allows you to import basically everything that is available in your actual SIF UI application project and use it for testing purposes. So now, since I've written this line, testable import, I will be able to use the bank account class. Now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, now it's complaining that the deposit doesn't really take anything. Okay, so this means that we need to go back to the bank account and we need to pass in something. Okay, there we go, double. I'm just writing enough code so that the compiler error will be gone. Now the test will still fail if I run the test and you can run the test just by clicking on this check mark or, or this box, the empty thing. And it's trying to run and it failed. And it's telling us that the balance is supposed to be 200, but the balance is 100. Hmm. So what actually happened? 
where did we where did we miss what do you think well, it's right here in the bank account deposit function. We are not really doing anything in the deposit function, right? So in the deposit function, we can actually attach the deposit or append the deposit, the amount to the balance. And that's gonna make the test pass. So now if I go back over here and run the test again, Hopefully the test is now passing. There we go. See that? All right. Now the same concept can be applied to withdraw function. So if I copy this test and I say withdraw money from the bank account, we can create a bank account with $100. We can even deposit $100 more. I mean, if you want to, I guess, we don't have to do that, but I can say withdraw, withdraw $50. Then the balance should be $50. But there is no withdraw function. So again, we'll have to go back and create a withdraw function. Withdraw the amount, which is double self.balance, and you already know, minus equals to this time. All right, now we can go back to our introduction to testing, again, the test part, and run this test. Okay, this test is also passing. Now, one thing to note about when you're writing unit test is that your unit test should be independent, it should be isolated, and independent means that one test should not depend on the other test. So if you're saying that well, my test only pass because if I run deposit first and then withdraw, then it will pass. But if I run withdraw first and then deposit, it's gonna fail. Then this means that there's a big problem in your test and you need to fix it because tests should be independent of each other. If you run it 10,000 times, it should produce the same result 10,000 times. The ordering of the test should not matter. So we have written two tests over here, which is pretty good. Now the other test that I want to write, which is which you also want to think about it, is throwing an error, throw insufficient funds error when balance is too low. Well, is that a good name when balance is too low or when we are like retrieving money? I mean, this is the interesting part, right? Because you can actually come up with probably a better name. All right. But this is a, the test that we are about to write. We Our test should throw an error. So the test is now only going to pass if there was an error thrown and the throw insufficient funds error when we can say the withdraw, uh, when balance is too low. Okay, so whenever we are withdrawing and the balance is too low, it should fire that error. Now you can come up with a better name. You can always ask ChatGPT to come up with a better name also. Will you ask ChatGPT to write the test? I would not write, ask ChatGPT to write the test. Um, and the reason is not like the ChatGPT is going to come up with a bad design or anything. It's because when you're writing test, you're thinking about the domain. You're thinking about, oh, bank account deposit. It will add money to the bank account. It will withdraw money from the bank account. Um, now, these tests are very simple, right? But think about if you were using the same approach, bank account, but you are trying to do, is the bank account frozen? Oh, if the person withdraw from the bank account and they have already withdrawn and they have zero dollar, then you should charge them fees. Now it gets complicated, right? So that's why you should, when you're writing these domain tests or the business rules, you should always take the time to understand the business domain rather than asking ChatGPT to write the test for you. Okay, so we have the bank account. Uh, we're starting with $100, as you can see right there. And this test, we want to make sure that when we try to withdraw money that's not in the bank account, 
like if I go ahead and say bank account over here, bank account or withdraw $500, this should throw an error. So the whole test is, should be checking that the error should be thrown when you don't have enough funds in your bank account. And with the expect macro, you can actually test that. So expect, and this is, there are multiple ones that you can actually use over here. So we can actually do this one probably, all right? So over here, we can say throws. Well, throws what kind of error? So I'm just gonna say bank account error. This is the type of the error that you'll be throwing. The comment is basically, what was your expectation? Like if that error is not thrown, then what comment you want it to be displayed? So expected insufficient funds error when withdrawing more than available balance. And this is the part that's actually going to throw the error. So what I can do is I can say bank account dot and withdraw. Withdraw a certain amount, right? So I'm gonna say $500. Now there is no such thing as bank account error, so probably we should uh, create that. So I'm gonna go into my over here. Now you can create a different, you know, struct for it and all that stuff, but I'm just gonna keep things simple. I'm gonna put it right here bank account error, which is error. You can use a localized error if you want to, that's fine. Insufficient funds. The required funds that you are trying to take out, double, and the available funds. Just a little bit more information that I'm passing so that it will know that what kind of a required funds that you, that you were asking for uh, and available fund for only 100. I think required was $500, right? Because you're trying to withdraw 500. Okay, so going back to our test, now we can say over here, try, but the bank account withdraw is not really a throwable function. So let's go there and make it throwable. So we can say throws. But this is not really going to throw any error, right? I mean, if you look at this, this doesn't look like it's throwing any error. So we need to make some sort of a condition over here. Like if I go to my test right now, and if I try to run the test, okay, so already it's not liking this because now the bank account dot withdraw is a throwable function. So it, we need to do try, okay? And if we do try, We'll probably do a throws over here. Let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, so over here you can see that it's failing. It's saying expectation fail and error was expected but none was thrown. And the comment that we wrote appears over here, which is right there, the comment. That's for our help. So this particular test was testing that an error will be thrown, but it was not thrown, all right? So how can we fix this problem? Well, going back to our actual code, maybe we need to add certain condition over here to make sure that the error is thrown. So if the amount is greater than the balance, then throw bank account error, bank account error, insufficient funds, required funds, the required funds, and the available will be the balance. So there we go. So now we are actually throwing an error inside the withdraw function. So let's go back over here and run the test again. Now when we run the test, you can see the test is passing because in the withdraw function, now we are checking that if the amount that you're trying to withdraw is greater than the balance, then we throw the error, okay? Withdraw money from the bank account. You also have to run all the tests to see that all of the tests are actually passing. So it looks like all the tests are passing. Um, sometimes for this test, 
you have the try bank account withdraw, right? And you can put it into a, you know, do and all that stuff. So you can definitely do that. You can mark this with do catch and in the catch, you can fail the test. So if there's an error thrown uh, from the withdraw, then you will, you know, cache the test. I mean, ca you, will, you will catch uh, cache it. Um, but right now, I think if the error is thrown over here, let's say if I'm doing like 500, it's automatically going to probably fail the test. Let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, you can see that it's automatically just failing because it's throwing the error. So it's kind of like failing the test in those cases. All right. Um, because we are we're trying to withdraw more amount. But right now it's okay. But maybe in the future you need to do a do catch over here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run the test again. Okay, so everything is passing. Great. So there we go. I mean, this is the basics of test-driven development. This is basic of, basics of unit testing. And when you're getting started with testing, try to start slowly, all right? Uh, try to just write one line of code. And after writing every line of code, obviously with the expectation, try to, you know, run the test to see what's going on. All right. And one of the ways is that when you write this, when you write your test first and you go back to your bank account, your actual code, only writing the smaller portion to just to make the test pass. That's your uh, goal to make sure that the test is passing. If the test can be passed by just returning over here like one line of code or returning something, then do that. And once you are comfortable with it, then you will see that you will be taking a little bit more bigger steps. So your steps might be a little bit bigger. All right. So hope you have enjoyed this very basic, really, really small mini course on introduction to test and development. And uh, thank you so much. And I do have one more uh, message for you that's going to be discussing in the next video. So I am sure that you have enjoyed this small course on test and development. Now, if you want to learn more, you can always go to azamsharp.school and check out my courses. I have a lot of courses on many different subjects, including on test and development. If you scroll down, you will find my course on test and development, which is currently on sale. And I'm also doing a workshop on test and development. Now that workshop is going to be, uh, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff. That's a three hour workshop and introduction to testing using, uh, you know, using Swift. And you'll be, we'll be covering test and development, unit testing, mocking, stubbing, integration testing, end to end testing. It's going to be around three hours long. It's going to be live on Zoom. And this is the workshop that you really need to attend to learn about testament development, unit testing, and writing better test. Because it's uh, writing better test is, is very important. Just because you have a lot of tests doesn't mean anything, all right? So better tests. We're gonna be writing tests that make sense. So definitely check out this workshop. The price of this workshop, you can see, is only $89 for a three-hour workshop. This is nothing. This is basically free, basically, right? Free workshop. So check it out. I will have the link right there in the description so you can, uh, you can enjoy it. And once again, thank you so much. And share this course with everyone that you know. Um, and thank you so much.